Canine Cantina here with a Nintendo Dad's first look of the Fates of Ort. The Fates of Ort is published and developed by 8-Bit Skull. So a big thanks to them for getting us the code so we can get this first look to you guys. Looks like the Fates of Ort is a retro fantasy RPG focused on strategic action in a land where time is frozen when you stand still. Cast powerful spells, but beware, they will cost you your life. Looks like the Fates of Ort was released last year on PC, March 31st. I uh, recently ported to the Switch and is going to be available here in just a couple days on July the 12th. Definitely got a cool looking 8-bit aesthetic to it. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, character select. Challenge mode for experienced fates of Ord adventurers. Definitely not me. Okay, so looks like I got a few different character choices here. Let's go with the hooded guy. The Academy. The quest first day has begun. It's my first day at the Academy. My sister, Valka, has already been enrolled for some time. She will meet me there. Valka, your sister greets you with a smile and a raised eyebrow. She stands with a hand on her hip, bow slung over her shoulder. Well, well, well. I heard you were joining the Academy, but I didn't believe it until I saw you walk through the door. What changed your mind? Farming just wasn't exciting enough. So you're trading the plow for a blade, huh? I don't know. I always thought your talents qualified you for scarecrow duties at best. She laughs warmly. Then adds, I'm just kidding. I'm really happy you're here. I can't wait to introduce you to Arg and Master Slovo. Speaking of, let's go see Arg. He's upstairs in the training room. Perhaps he'll show you a thing or two. Follow me. actually moves very smoothly for joystick controls. Definitely liking the 8-bit aesthetic to it too. Are you ARG? As you gain sight of the training room, you catch the swordsman performing his finishing move, cleaving the practice target in half. He turns to you with a smile, wiping sweat off his brow. Greetings. Valk has told me all about you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Aragast Mortifax. Yes, yes, of the Mortifax royal family. But being a distant relative to the king isn't my claim to fame. He says with a wink as he grabs a blade and flings it in the air. It lands squarely in the middle of the room, tip embedded in the wooden floor. You can call me Arg. He gestures to the sword. Let's see what you're made of, huh? Know your way around a blade? Sure, I'll figure it out. All right, that's the spirit. I won't interfere then. You pick it up and go wild. A plain looking blade, standard issue for novices at the academy. It looks like it's been used for many years. Pick up. ZR for sword. Okay. That thing didn't know what hit it. Hey, see the faint target pulsing beneath your feet? You can aim with that. Try moving it around. Bring it over to me. That's it. Now snap it back to yourself. Here's where things get real interesting. You can target lock your foes. That way, even if both of you are moving around in the heat of battle, your aim will still be true. Try it on this target. Hit it, but make sure your target locked first. Nice one. Let's try again, but a bit harder this time. Again, faster. Ha! Ah, any fool can blindly fly like a target. The skill is in target locking at first. Try again.
Oh yeah, you've got talent, kid. I don't know about you, but I'm parched. Let's head downstairs and grab a drink, shall we? This here's the tap room. After upstairs, probably my favorite room. Grab me a drink, will you? The student nods when you approach him to ask for a drink. Reaching behind a barrel, he produces two bottles and hands them to you. Press to use quest item. Okay, so it's up on the D-pad. Cheers, Arg whoops as your bottles glide, and welcome to the Academy. We'll make a word out of you, you'll see. Valka rounds the corner and rolls her eyes as she spots you in the middle of a large gulp. I see Arg is sharing his finest skills already. Hurry, you dopes. Master Slova is about to welcome you to the Academy. At once, Arg snaps to attention with a laugh then ushers you out of the tap room. Let's go. We can't keep Master Slovo waiting. Ah, our newest recruit. The Master of the Academy welcomes you. An old man. You sense a lifetime of scholarly accomplishment in the dignified way he carries himself. He glances at the sword you are carrying. I see you have acquainted yourself with our resident blade master already. That is good. Dark times are coming, and we will need fighters. I will now formally induct you into the academy. In the names of the sisters, goddesses, and creators of Ork, I beseech I see Aluma, giver of life, to bless your new beginning. Meyer Akuria, beacon of the mind, to illuminate your path, and Shal Moloch, the shadow, to protect you from an untimely death. Master Slova is violently interrupted by a loud crash. The ground trembles and a chasm appears in the floor where the titles, tiles crumble away. Out of the purple darkness spill vicious demons, clawing at everyone nearby. Arg raises his sword and shouts, two arms. Valka, drawing her bow, roars, protect Master Slovo. With the demons defeated, a look of panic is mirrored on all the faces in the hall. Master Slovo appears to be shaken most severely, and he whispers with fear, it has already begun. Looking to Valka and Art, he commands, I thought we had more time to prepare. I must fetch something from my study. Meet me in the library, I will explain everything there. Come with us, Valka shouts as she grabs you by the sleeve. Okay, so even when they're leading you somewhere, if you stop, everything freezes. What is going on? Arg breaks the silence, voice trembling. His joking demeanor has been replaced by a determined gravity, and why did we let Master Slovo go off on his own? I should go get him. What if more demons appear, or what if he falls through the floor? Valka, as serious as Arg, shuts him down. We have our orders. You two stay here and wait for Master Slovo. I think I've read something about this before. I'm going to go looking for the book. A man, flanked by two stone-faced knights, strides into the library. His clothing looks to be of an ancient fashion, yet undeniably of the highest quality. He wears the contemptuous sneer of a noble force to interact with those beneath him. One of the knights barks an introduction. Duke, Camersault, Mortifax. Arg's jaw drops. Mortifax? 
He clears his throat and responds, I am Aragas, Mortifax, distant relative to the king. It is a pleasure to meet you, Duke Camersault. Are you here to assist us with the demons? The Duke's lips curl up into an unsettling grin. Oh, certainly, young Aragast. And more, I offer you. He glances at both you and Arg. Power beyond the confines of your imagination. I offer you magic. Arg gasps in shock. Magic? But I thought it was just a legend. Stories about the sisters were just a creation myth. The Duke weighs his hand dismissively. Yes, it is true, but this magic is not of the sisters. This is more powerful, free of constraint. None of the limits imposed by the sisters. He growls. Purple fires burn in his eyes. You can have it all right now, with no sacrifice. You accept this gift that I have, that I offer. He looks at you both, awaiting an answer. Yes, I want the power. You prepare to accept the offer, but stop yourself just before you speak. The promise of limitless power is appealing, almost intoxicating. But can you trust this man? His eyes glint with malice, and a smile fills you with unease. Can something like this truly come at no cost, without sacrifice? I highly doubt it, but we're going to accept it anyways. Both you and Arg e eagerly accept the Duke's gift of power. In turn, he raises his hand and slams a bolt of purple energy into your respective chests. You immediately feel power cursing through your veins, coursing through your veins, and a strong grip take hold of your heart. You feel the need for more, much more. You get the sense that you are the most important part of the world and that anyone that disagrees must be crushed. Master Slovo comes running behind the Duke, horror point on his face. No, whatever he says, do not listen to him. He is the harbinger of consumption, evil magic, the antithesis of the sisters. Thief, yeah, thesis of the sisters. Do not accept his magic, it will corrupt you. Already Arg has taken a knee, clearly struggling with the effects of consumption magic on his soul. Whoops. Enough, Duke Camersault roars. Guards, seize this man. He is a traitor to Orc and the Mortifex Kingdom. Take him to the court, where he will stand trial for his crimes. Master Slovo, struggling against the knights, holds up a crystal in the shape of a teardrop. Shouting desperately, Arg, catch this. It will take you to the sisters. You are our only hope. He throws it. The crystal sails through the air, missing Arg. You instinctively reach up and catch it. As your hand closes around the crystal, you feel the tug of another dimension. The last thing you see before you fade away is the Duke pointing at you, snarling. You, drop that thing right now. You don't understand what will happen. The Void Plane In front of you stands an old lady, learning, leaning on her cane. Her eyes are squinting as you approach, apparently appraising you. As you get closer, you catch a brief flicker of fear in her eyes. It can't be, she mutters to herself. I sense consumption in you, but... She shakes her head as if physically riddling, ridding herself of the notion that you are afflicted with consumption magic. You look confused about why you are here. Her scratchy voice begins. Believe me, so am I. I expected a champion, a hero. She briefly gazes behind her, where the path splits into three. Instead, we get you. You are to carry the power, the very essence of one of my daughters. All right. Oh, don't bother yourself with that too much, dear. You are in a void beyond and above the world you are accustomed to. We created it when we had to flee reality a few centuries ago. You will be sent back as soon as you gain the power of one of my daughters. Yes, unfortunately it is necessary. Consumption has returned, awoken from its slumber. Yes, it threatens the world, but more importantly it threatens my daughters as well. We need an agent of good to destroy consumption. What should I do now? Go speak to my daughters, get to know them, and choose the one that fits the best to accompany you. Her voice begins to tremble. Do not take this lightly. My daughters have nearly spent themselves protecting your world, their creation, to give you enough power to stop consumption. She will have to give all of her energy to you. Atop the column sits a young woman with flowing azure hair. She is carefree, playfully dangling her leg off the side of the pillar. 
Flowers dance atop the palm of her hand, continually blooming in the blink of an eye. Hi there, pleased to meet you, she erupts, but interrupts herself. You remind me of someone I used to know, a long time ago. It was just brief, but he was so nice. I am Asi Aluma, but some call me Lai. I love beginnings, so I am overjoyed to make your acquaintance. It will be so much fun to explore the world with you and meet new people. Oh, can I come, please? Now let's see what the others have to say. She seems a bit reckless, and accepting magic from a random stranger is already pretty reckless. <laughs> the woman sits on the chair, methodically flicking through pages of some ancient tome. Her posture is strict, her expression severe. She lifts her eyes to appraise you, making you feel insignificant as her gaze takes the measure of your character. Well met. I am the aspect of the mind, but you may call me mere Acuria. You do not strike me as the architect archetypal hero, she states quietly. Your presence hints at a great power, yet it seems un unearned. Your lack of experience is compensated for by opportunism. Very well, shall I accompany you? Let's see what the third one has to say. You approach the pillar, where you see a shadow of a woman issuing from behind it. As you get to the other side, however, the shade moves. You attempt to follow it around the pillar, but it remains elusive. The hairs on the back of your neck rise as you realize you are chasing that which exists only in the absence of life and light, death itself. Greetings, child. I am Shao Molak, a trembling whisper carried by a yet unfelt wind. I sense that I will be busy in your wake. I knew one like you before. Like him, one day I will guide you through the cold and howling winds to the underworld below. I am much maligned yet misunderstood. I do not take those whose time has not come, though I sense you will die shortly. Mother will bring you back. You have a destiny to fulfill. First, tell me, do you wish the shadow of death to accompany you on your journey? Yeah, let's do the shadow of death. Why not? Valka, standing over Arg, gasps as you materialize back in the library. She hugs you, crying tears of relief. I dealt with the knights after the duke left. Barely, she says through gritted teeth. By the time I finished, he had already corrupted everyone and killed those who refused to accept his gift. Come, we must save Master Slovo and figure out a way to cleanse Arg's soul. She pauses for a moment. What happened to you? Uh, where do we start? I met the sisters. She stares at you with an expression of utter incredulity. Incredul incredulity. You mean to tell me that not only are the sisters real, but you met them in person. I don't know what to make of that. Honestly, I believe you, I guess. It's all just a bit much. I received magic. You have magic? But I thought it wasn't real. How does it work? Catching the expression on your face, she nods. We really need to rescue Master Slovo. He must know what to do. Arg sits slumped against the wall, beads of sweat trickling down his forehead. He clutches his heart and stomach as he looks up at you with strained eyes. It's trying to take me over. Please hurry and get this out of me. Guess we'll head downstairs. Element, you don't know any spells yet. Quest log. Aftermath, I've appeared back in the academy and need to figure out what to do from here. Look, there's more of these portals. Did I fall in them? Oh. Looks like there's an icon over here.
Tom Walker. Uh, there you are, Duke Camersault says, with a smug grin on his face. I think I know where you disappeared to, and I know that's not good news. In the interest of expediency, I will now kill you. Looking over at Valka, he adds, both of you. Valka swiftly and quietly readies her bow, but she is not fast enough. The fatal spell hits her with tremendous force, driving her dead on the spot. Because I took 900 damage, I'm dead. Guessing that wasn't meant to happen. You draw on the energy of the fate spikes. Your body takes form again. The old woman scowls at you with fury in her eyes. You think you can take one of my daughters and just die? She snarls. You matter now. You have a task to fulfill. Get back there and destroy consumption. Then you can die for all I care. You feel reality tugging on you, and the vision of the old woman fades as you materialize in the real world once more. Back at the academy. The old man looks like he has seen a ghost, shifting his gaze between you and the shimmering spike next to you. He exclaims, what? Where, where did you come from? I'm not sure. It was cold, windy, and confusing. The old man listens to your story, wide-eyed. Remarkable, he whispers as he gently touches the shimmering spike. You died, went to the land of the spirits, and came back. How did you find your way? Old mother sent me. I have the power of one of her daughters. His jaw drops and his eyes go moist with emotion. I, I have studied this for so long. I've never stopped believing in the sisters. Listen, child. I don't know who you are or why they chose you, but if it is true that you have the power of one of the sisters, then you are the only one that can stop Duke Cam Camersault and the consumption he is unleashing on Orc. Do not speak of magic or the sisters or old mother. People will not believe you, as they have long since forgotten. I have been mocked all my life for my research, but he waves dismissively. No matter. We must focus on the task at hand. He clasps you by the shoulders. I am Deckord, scholar of the fates and the lost magics. What should I do now? I have taken the residing in the chroniclary. Come see me there. I will tell you everything. I know to help you on your quest. The custodian of the chroniclary will almost certainly be of great help as well. You must speak to her. Simply walk west from here and you will find it. But beware, the roads are dangerous now. Rogue knights, brigands, and even corrupted monsters and demons from below. What is going on? Duke Camersault has been posing as a distant relative of King Sullivan. Really, I believe the Duke is the very same person implicated as playing a major part in the cataclysm that took place hundreds of years ago. How he survived, or why he's returned now, I know not. It is clear, however, that not only does he possess magic, but it is fueled by consumption, a polar opposite of the magic of the sisters. Duke Camersault has been touring Ort, offering this tremendous power to anyone he meets, promising limitless wealth, knowledge, and everything else one might desire. Those that accept transform into hideous monsters as soon as they attempt to use the magic. Those that refuse are slain or forced to flee. Worse yet, anybody that uses consumption magic directly bypasses the link imposed by the sisters. Normal magic requires the life energy of the caster, thus limiting its use. Consumption magic, on the other hand, draws directly on the very fabric of our world. Holes into the abyss have started forming around the world, centered in our capital city. If this goes on, our whole world will be consumed. Duke Camersault and whatever is providing his consumption magic must be stopped. Where do we begin? I have taken to, the residing, taken to residing in the Chroniclary. Come see me there. I will tell you everything I know and help you on your quest. The custodian of the Chroniclary will almost certainly be of great help as well. You must speak to her. Simply walk west from here. Uh, yeah, I already read all that. What happened to my sister? Deckord shakes his head. I'm sorry, my friend. She had perished when I found her here a few days ago. 
I arranged for her to be moved to a nearby mausoleum. It is not far, slightly west of here, past the chroniclary. You can say your farewell to her there. A few days ago, how long have I been gone? The old man scratches his head. A week at least, he says, studying your expression. Judging by your reaction, it seems you feel you were only gone momentarily. How fascinating. I will bring my sister back. If I can come back, so can she. Most would scoff at you or accuse you of blasphemy. Seeing what I have seen here today, I know better. But this is beyond my expertise. I will be happy to share my knowledge with you. Perhaps it will be of some assistance. That sounds good. Port Grasslands. The woman cranes her neck to one side and grins menacingly. Don't worry, I am your savior, the one that will cleanse the world of evil. You will see, and will kneel before me. Did you speak to the Duke by any chance? She laughs, nodding vigorously. Yes, yes, he has given me power. Tremendous power. She raises her arms, purple sparks flickering over her fingertips. Her crazed face turns to shock, and she begins to convulse. I, er, she stutters, before dropping to the ground, in a horrifying display of bones, snapping into new alignments, and flesh rippling into a new composition. You watch her transform into a monster. West Quantiquary, the storm. Let's head west. The man looks at you anxiously as you enter his house. You're not one of them, are you? What do you mean? Ever since the royal visit here, people have been acting strange. I hid when they knocked on the door. I had a bad feeling about it all. His voice trembles and he starts fighting tears. My brother turned into some sort of monster, a plant spewing green spores. My wife is acting strange too. They both spoke to that evil looking man. Duke Camersault? Yeah, that's his name. We have to get out of here. I heard Dorman Court is in ruins, but Trawada is nearby. It might still be safe. Take me with you. The man is interrupted by a violent rupture in the ground. He is swallowed by the chasm appearing in the floor before he can even scream. All right, then. All right, here's some knights over here. is dead. Arg is on the brink of corruption. Master Slova has been hauled off to stand trial for crimes he did not commit. The world is crumbling, and it is up to you to save it, with no help or guidance. Where do you even begin? If you feel stuck or don't know what to do, the answer is almost always, explore more. Your actions will open up paths for some quests and block off others. Keep exploring and gaining experience. When you're ready to face the end, head to Dorman Court and take on the consumption magic of the scorned and Duke Hammerstall. There's the plant. Wonder if there's a way to heal up. The little creature jumps as you approach. Boy there, stand back. I have an entropic transducer and, and I'm not afraid to use it. 
How'd you get a ship over here? By flying it, of course. Ah, uh, well, granted our technology is probably quite alien to you. Eh, must seem like magic. The creature relaxes. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Brox, first class navigator of the exalted Garanauts, second cog division. The creature puts his chest up, clearly proud over his rank. What brings you here? Our seismic monitoring units detected some extraordinary subsurface tremors emanating from this very region. I've been on a handful of expeditions before, so I was sent to investigate. I didn't get very far, though. No, not at all. Shot down in a manner most inconsiderate. I was approaching from the north, bearing towards the origin of the tremors, a little bit south of here. I was cruising at a low altitude when I went past a giant black tower. Curiosity got the better of me, and I got too close. Then BAM! A white lightning from the top of the tower struck my ship, knocked out my prismatic aether coil, and my navigator to boot. I managed to crash land here. Can I help you somehow? That would be most splendid. Take this prismatic aether coil and get it repaired for me, please. It's not damaged badly. Any blacksmith here with the right tools ought to be able to straighten it out. I pray, in return, I offer to ferry you to some location that's not easily accessible on foot. From a bird's eye view, I can assure you that they would be very interesting to explore for an adventure of your stature. Very interesting indeed. I'm going to break these pots. Alright, I'm assuming each of these is an objective I need to accomplish. So we'll keep making our way west. Northwest. Turmeric and Tega, Temple, or Castle Artifacts, the rest, Mausoleum. Looking for the chroniclery. This be the chroniclery? Is the mausoleum. The man standing in front of you inspires a strong sense of nausea. His skin is untouched by the sun and has a sickening purple tinge. You spot a couple of large bones protruding from his rucksack. Greetings, he says, with an ingratiating smile. That's my sister. Oh, he is it now? He laughs nervously. Terribly sorry you have to see her like this. Wait a few weeks and she'll look much better. I will do anything to bring her back. Anything, he hisses menacingly. Yes. I do not belong here. There is a place on another plane where bones walk. That is where I wish to be. I have conducted many experiments, none of them fruitful. What do you need? I need the bones of a royal. That's the key. They will speak the words to, the op to open the door for me. When I get to the other side, I can arrange to bring your sister back. The true king resides there. He has the power. Where can I find royal bones? In the crypts of Castle Mortifax. I went there myself, but the king wouldn't even see me. The day when his tongue rots... Cannot come soon enough. How old is he anyway? He ponders. In any case, Castle Mortifax lies southwest of here. Alright, so they said the mausoleum was a little past the chroniclary. So I need to head back this way.
archer. Coins three times. This took me back to the void plane. Ah, you are. There you are, child. You took you long enough, she chides. I set up this area for you. I gathered the spells I could find from days long gone. Many are missing, but these should be enough. Simply go up to a spell and select it to learn it. Once you have experienced enough to learn another, I will draw you back here. The barriers will disappear as you learn more. We need to protect your fledgling mind from the more powerful spells you see. Bolts of arcane power are the combat staple of a competent magician's arsenal. These deadly projectiles burst on impact, dealing damage to any creature close enough. Sacramento combat and Tridion. Tri Something evil rises from below. Shadow Ball, Sword. Oh, I've got Magic. Evidently, there was something there that killed me. Oh, and I start all back over at the academy. Wonderful. So, I wonder if there's other spires I can find to activate those as save points. And looks like all the enemies respawn as well. the old man over there. The old man stands, absentmindedly stroking his beard as he peruses a stack of dusty tomes. Well met, young one. Let us converse. He pauses to put one finger over his mouth and nods to the chroniclarian quietly. What are these orange glimmering spikes? The old man rummages through his notes. I've been studying them for some time now, and it pleases me that my theories are beginning to be proven as truth. I believe that, at the culmination of the Cataclysm, the sisters defeated consumption, but not entirely. Instead, consumption was trapped underground. The fate spikes, I believe, are literal nails sealing the coffin of consumption. It would take a tremendous amount of power to achieve this. That would explain why magic disappeared from Ord centuries ago. Nearly all the sisters' power was contained in the spikes. It also explains why you can regain your health when you approach them. Good to know. It is your bond to the sisters that allows you to draw on the light and power in the spikes. If my theories are correct, then there must have been one primary spike underground, 
completing the seal. If consumption is set loose, it must be because the spike has been shattered. Since the epicenter of the events appear to be in Dormancourt, that is where I suspect the spike is located. If this is the case, you must seek out the fragments of the spike, reassemble it, and make it strong enough to hold consumption once more. Deckward continues speaking excitedly about the spikes. I believe they are all connected, in a network of nodes. If you acquire a map from the Chroniclarian, you should be able to instantaneously warp to certain places you have been before. Furthermore, now that you are linked with the spikes, you can use them to store more equipment than you could possibly carry, even attune your magic. If you find something to help you do that, just approach a spike and interact with it. The woman sits reading a dusty old tome, a look in confusion on her face. What are you reading? It's the old book on magic. She shows you the cover, Tabula Arcana, a bridge version for the novice practitioner. She reads, As is customary, wizards prefer to expend as little effort as possible. The imbuing process as it relates to status effects cast on structures generated by the wizard is a perfect example of this. Is this the Chroniclarian? A stern-looking woman stands near the entrance of this ancient library. Her clear eyes appraise you and find yourself softening your footsteps as to not disturb the silence. Welcome to the Chroniclary. Her voice is a whisper, yet clear as crystal. The oldest and greatest collection of books in all of Ord, or at least it used to be. What happened? A combination of poor stewardship and a lack of appreciation for the written word is my in inference. This used to be the most impressive collection of books in the world. Well, I suppose it still is, she scoffs, but it is a shadow of its former glory. How can I help? You look like an adventurer, perhaps even a student enough to appreciate the value of the written word, she smiles. If you find any books on your travels, bring them back here. Is there a reward? There's not much I can offer. I found a repository of old documents, maps, sea charts, musical notes, strange old scrolls. I would be happily I would happily trade those in exchange for any books you may find. Here, why don't you take this? It's a map of the world. Supposedly it has magic properties. How does it work? A thirst for knowledge is admirable. See the faded pins on the map? She pauses for a moment, a look of confusion on her face. That's strange. The pin next to the academy isn't faded anymore. But you're supposed to need to have magic to use the map. I do have magic. Oh, she looked puzzled. Well then, the notes accompanying the map state that it can be used to instantaneously travel to certain fate spikes previously visited by the caster. That would be very useful indeed for someone with magical capabilities to exploit it. What is a fate spike? Fate spikes are large, orange, shimmering monuments scattered across the orb. They are thought to have erected in worship of the sisters, but frankly, little of this information is verifiable through reputable sources. Some of them claim fate spikes have truly fantastical properties. And the old man already told me most of this. So, look at the map. All right. So, we are going to call it there. Once again, this has been a first look of the fates of orbs um, there's the overview of the map um, very interesting story uh, to be a port from a pc handles really well on controller um, i'll definitely be putting more time into this so thanks for watching everybody have a good one